the other day, uh huh. I plucked a pair of underwear out of my underwear drawer. Yes. You know, and it's a really hard decision. What am I going to wear that day? What's like dependent on where I need them? And where am, I, am I leaving the house? Am I staying home? Do you base it also on what your outfit's going to be? Yes. Yeah. Jeans, like I can't wear these ones, that one's. Yeah. I picked a pair of me undies out of my underwear drawer and I was, I'm very happy I did. They were like little boy shorts. So yeah. they kind of look like jockey underpants, Aww. but they're girl stuff. So they're cute and they were stripy and adorable. I got a comment from Vince. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> they are so freaking soft. They really are. Wow. Yeah. I got to try them. I can't wear boy shorts. No, no, no. I have a girl butt. Those are around the house for me, boy shorts. Oh, how cute and borderline erotic. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, me undies, um, they're really great. <laughs> they're, they're seriously soft, feel-good undies delivered right to your door. And guess what? It's time for you to revamp your underwear drawer because you know what? You deserve it. <laughs> and then, but also you can save money and time each month. You know, all that time that you fucking spend shopping for underwear. Oh my God. Here's me at the mall inside Victoria's Secret. Fucking one o'clock, two o'clock, <laughs> three o'clock. The calendar map months are coming down. May, June, July. So much time here, and you don't have to do that anymore because me undies, um, they're offering 20% off your first pair and they send them to you right to your door, Karen. Thank the, that's great. Can they put them onto my body? They can do that too. What if you just put four on it once and every day you took off? <laughs> uh, they're offering you 20% off your first pair. Just use our special URL. It's meundies.com slash murder. 20% off your first pair. Go ahead, Karen. Oh, that's meundies.com slash murder. Is that what you meant? Yeah, 20% off. Meundies.com slash, slash murder. murder. Bye. Bye. Feral Audio. In 1903, John Harvey Kellogg, the namesake of the Kellogg cereal brand, who's credited with co-inventing cornflakes with his brother, opened a luxury health resort in Michigan called the Battle Creek Sanitarium. At the time, sanitarium was a new word of Kellogg's invention, not meant as a term for a prison for the mentally ill, but rather a play on the word sanitation. Kellogg's precursor to the health spa became a destination for the rich and famous, and his fanaticism for hygiene and healthy living led him to evangelize now common practices like medical circumcision and enemas, as well as the consumption of a cultured dairy product that dates to 5000 BC. The creamy tart substance grew in popularity in the States during the 1930s when Dannon began offering it for retail sale. In the late 1970s, health-conscious consumers were eager for an ice cream substitute with less fat, leading to the creation of a frozen variety of the ancient delicacy. This provoked a craze that started in the 80s and continues, with some fits and starts, to the current day. In 2006, a businessman named Philip Chang opened a self-serve store in Fullerton, California, trumping the previous concepts with giant cups, an array of flavors, and dozens of dry and wet toppings, selling the treats by combined weight. Currently riding a wave of popularity, the fast-expanding chain has over 300 stores in the Americas, Australia, Asia, and the Middle East, becoming a destination for decadence, just as Kellogg's Resort was a destination for health consciousness. This week on Doughboys, Yogurt Land. <laughs> Welcome to Doughboys, the podcast about chain restaurants. We're a part of feralaudio.com. The best way to support ours and other shows in the network is to use the referral link on our website anytime you shop at Amazon. I'm Nick Weiger, alongside my co-host... Yeah? I forgot to f fucking... Pull up wow. I forgot to. I pulled. I pulled a. Uh, I pulled a uh, Mitch with the uh, uh, with the drop, and that I didn't have. Didn't prepare this in advance. Wait, hold on. Ooh, I don't have my. Record. I don't have my drop prepared either. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got one. Hold on. Wait, hold on. I'm looking through this, the email. Jesus Christ. Uh, here one. Here's one. Here's this one's pretty good. Uh, how about Krang's body? Mike Mitchell, the spoon man. Wait, you already said that one. <laughs> Did I say Krang's body? No, there's no way I said Krang's body. I didn't label it as as used. All right, here here's why. I definitely didn't do this one. Rejected nothing but trouble character, Mike Mitchell the Spoon that's Man. That's bullshit. I refer to us as the twins from nothing but trouble. Oh, I think that's fine. That one's from at Don Maddox. Thanks, Don. I uh, I checked. Fuck you, Don. Uh, I checked out uh, when you start talking about enemas because that's fucking disgusting. You know what's crazy? The, the detail I omitted from this one is that there <clears throat> is that apparently Kellogg's would do Kellogg would do uh, yogurt enemas. Ugh. Yeah. What Isn't that fuck? fucked up? Well, and that movie Road to Wellville. Do you remember yeah. that movie with the that was about this guy? Forget? It was a fictionalized version of it with Anthony Hopkins. I feel like it would be a cold, or maybe yogurt would be nice and cold on your uh, on your bottom. I don't think I, I, having yogurt up your butt sounds like a pleasant experience. Anyway, here's it's time for my new segment. 
uh, Toast Spoon Man. This one comes from uh, at Armin Weitzman. Do you know that? Do you know him, Nick? Yeah, I know Armin Weitzman. Uh, do you Good know? If it, do you know if his what his Twitter handle is? Uh, wait, let's see. Ar- <laughs> Armin has a. Oh God, this is a disaster. <laughs> it, 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 what a train wreck of an opening. Who me? Uh, no, yeah, both of it. Armin. I think it's, it's is he just Armin, Armin Weitzman? It's just it is, Armin Weitzman. It right? is at Armin Weitzman. Anyways, here it is. Here's his toast to the Spoon Man. A toast to Mike Mitchell, a man who has kept a picture of me above his bed out of guilt for hurting my precious feelings. He knows I watch over him when he slumbers, snores, or lets a little white out of his secret member. The little white that one day will make him a child? Question mark. Yes, that's the one. Love you, Mike. Lakers won, but green is the color of the Celtics. Dirty green? Question mark. I'd say so. Hi, Doughboys. Oh, wait. Did I do this? Hi, Weiger. I, uh, I like spicy mustard sometimes, but not like that much. It's my twin aunt's birthday. That Great, was thanks, Armin, Armin Weitzman. If you have a toast for the Spoon Man, send it to spoonmandrops at gmail.com. Or be one of Mitch's friends and text him. <laughs> well, guess what? It was a new segment. Yeah, and, I know. You got you to gotta put your thumb on the scale a little bit. And these people offered up toasts of me. It's very nice. Um, Lakers do rule. You're right about that, Armin. Uh, so, uh... <laughs> cool. <laughs> you are wearing a dorky Lakers hat. It's a cool hat. Uh, also, I just want to say... To Spoon Nation, and we're gonna give you a little bit of a drop coming on right up in one second, baby. We should just redo this whole beginning. No, we this shouldn't. Is, this is an insult to our loyal no, listeners. No, it's not. The MP3 is, such a is mess. attached. Here we go. This is from Andy Andrew Al Adler, uh, and it's a SoundCloud. It's gonna be great. And away we go. <laughs> Love between a man and a woman, not a man and a sandwich. Yes. Daddy, would you like some sausage? Not the game. We're talking about practice, man. Anything possible? Yeah, fuck yeah. A full of glass special. I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my mind. That's that. You know what? This is the thing. The way our podcast is conducted is we have our guests sitting in the studio. And if you've listened to a lot of episodes, you've heard some guests remark on this before, but they kind of they kind of sitting there mutely because Dustin gets the levels all set, he gets all the microphones going, mm-hmm. and so it's just easier to do that than to bring someone in from the other room and then do it at that point. It's less of an interruption. But I have never seen a more angry expression <laughs> than what our guest has been doing. That's our fucking the guest, for that. God's sakes. <laughs> He's been just sitting there just like glaring at us, just so mad. <laughs> He's probably mad because he is who he is. <laughs> That's just his nature. I know why he's mad. Because he has a fucking sh- shitty-ass writing partner. <laughs> uh, let's introduce our guest. Uh, he's a screenwriter whose credits include the upcoming <clears throat> films Fist Fight and Sonic the Hedgehog, Van Roby Show. Hi, Van. Hey. Hi to uh, everybody out in Spoon Nation and Hell hi yeah. to the Burger Brigade. Oh, boy. Hmm, you just gave, gave Endearing yourself to our listeners right away. I also like there was a Celtics anything is possible thing in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you didn't care. Um, I know the reference. Welcome, my friend. Uh, thanks for having me here. So, the Mitch remarked on your writing partner. So, the the films. If you're an avid listener and you've heard uh, Evan Susser's name before, uh, the the films that he he is credited on are films that you are credited on because the two of you are a duo. You uh, work that's together. That's correct. We work together. I see Evan uh, every week, um, which is. Uh, I think I'm maybe the uh, the only person forced to see Evan more than you guys. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> more so than even his wife? Uh, yeah, well, but she travels a lot right. by design. Poor yeah. Jamie. <laughs> now, are you referred to as the slim one of the duo? Uh, you know, some people call me the tall one, which is, right. I think, we're, we're almost the same height, though, so I really, I, I, <laughs> I don't want to encourage a, a slim one sort of a designation, but right. tall one I don't find to be really particularly accurate. So the uh, slim one. In a manner of speaking, yeah. <laughs> but it's kind of like you guys kind of have a, a snobs versus slobs sort of demeanor because Susser is the ultimate slob, <clears throat> and I'd say you're something of a snob. Well, I think we kind of uh, carry a classic sort of a Siskel and Ebert, Laurel and Hardy, right. uh, uh, tall guy, uh, larger man uh, pairing. Sure. Susser, I, I had my couch for, I've had my couch for seven years now. It's a 
beat up piece of shit. Never have spilled anything on it. Susser was over, immediately spilled like a big vat of blue cheese. <laughs> I don't even know where he got it from, truly. I was like, where did that, it, it, it was blue cheese, I don't know, we ordered yeah, something. Yeah, you gotta watch out for spills with him. He spilled the whole fucking thing, and we turned over the couch cushion. That's that's how we that's how we fixed the, uh, the problem. That's I feel like I've just, like, <clears throat> 70% of the time when I see Susser, he just has mustard on him. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, we, uh, you know, I, I very early in our relationship embraced that side of Evan, and I think yeah. that it gives, uh, uh, it gives an unpredictability to us uh, as a team. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, do you tell think you've quick, ever? Uh, go ahead. Uh, have, do you think you've ever been in the writers' room with him for too long, and then he started to uh, imagine you as a giant hot dog? Ever? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, uh, I think more along the time, uh, you know, in Seinfeld when uh, Kramer is imagined as the full turkey by right. Newman. <laughs> That's basically what I. That's I fear that every day. Um, I, I, I I liked that. Oh, that's a great episode. First of all, and then second of all, I liked that drop. They had some Seinfeld, uh, a little bit of Seinfeld in there. Yeah, I don't want to insult uh, Spoon Nation or any of the people who submit the drops or uh-huh. the particular submitter this time, uh-huh. but I just want to say in general, I have noticed a trend across Doughboys <clears throat> episodes mm-hmm. that the drops have maybe. Um, I don't want to say taking a dip in quality. Are you, are you saying that they've worn out their welcome? No, I want to. I want to make it very clear that I do not think they've worn out their welcome. I think that they've taken a noticeable dip in quality, and I think that mm, uh, wow. the maybe onus they've... is on the people who are putting them together, or on maybe on Mitch himself to uh, kind of raise the bar back to the high level that it used to uh, have. Right. Like, I, and I'm one to talk mm. on this particular episode because I was unprepared going in, but. Uh, I feel like you have no screening process anymore. There was a point when you would listen to a few of them and then pick your favorite, and now it's just like you just pick whatever one is in your inbox. That's pretty much accurate. So we've kind of, as a result, it's kind of like stagnated. But here's the thing: we've was got there, roast. Was there, was there a Simpson? We got okay. We got roast spoon man. We got roast spoon man. You've got toast spoon man. Maybe toast spoon man takes the place of the drops for a little while, and you you, you let the drops drop off, and mm. then you bring them back in when when the fans are screaming for them. Now I don't like that idea, yeah, but I want to have a, I want to share an observation about right. it. Uh, as I was sitting here, uh, and when I heard Mitch launch into his uh, toast uh, from Armin, I thought, oh, this is taking the place of the drops right but uh-huh. i want to say i was disappointed i was like oh no there won't be drops in the episode gotcha that i was finally allowed to come on doughboys and do <laughs> um you know because i knew there were drops back when you guys did popeyes which was an episode that was promised to me this isn't like a parole hearing it was like <laughs> a big waiting list that we like if we're gatekeepers also, finally th- letting you on i'm thinking of kicking your ass out of here right now you fuck. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry i'm just i'm still a little steamed i'm from uh i'm from louisiana right i'm a that's I'm right, Louisiana yeah. boy. We wanted to talk about this. No, we, we, because the, previously we wanted you to on the podcast yeah. for Popeyes. Yes. And we had an we opportunity to have uh, Leslie Arfin on. Mm-hmm. And Leslie Arfin also wanted to do Popeyes. So we were like, hey, we're going to have someone else do Popeyes. And you were this. You were pretty personally hurt by this. Well, it's just that I, you, I had asked uh, well in advance and Mitch, right. had, Mitch had committed mm-hmm. to doing Popeyes with me. And then it was also Mitch yeah. who... Told Leslie she could do Popeyes. Right. That's and right. If I recall, Mitch tried to for a minute kind of put it on the Doughboys collectively. Right. Maybe hint or suggest I mean, that I'll, Nick I'll, I'll, had I'll, been I'll behind the you. other. I, I maybe booking. even said Nick did it. <laughs> yeah. And then I, I think I also at this point, I, at some point in this interaction, I think I I said to Mitch, uh, "Hey, didn't we say Van was going to come on to do Popeyes?" And I think your reply was, "Eh." Fuck Van <laughs> or something along those lines. Hmm, hold on, let me think about this. One, I got to think about. <clears throat> Should I have Toast Spoon Man replace uh, my drops? And my answer for that is no. Fuck Weiger. <laughs> and then for Van, did I hurt Van's feelings? Who cares? Fuck Van as well. <laughs> well, I was I expected that kind of a reaction from you, Mitch. To be honest, which is why I brought my notes for what I was going to talk about for Popeye. Right. Oh, so Jesus! Christ. I'm going to let you guys know what the topics I was going to discuss are. I'm not going to go into the topics or uh-huh. discuss them because I would have to be invited on for Popeyes in order to do that. But I'm just going to give you guys a preview of what you missed out on. Um, oh, oh my God! So the first part is the all you care to eat Popeyes located by my high school, which was a uh, as much as you want to eat Popeyes, as unlimited mm-hmm. Popeyes that you could have, a Sounds rare opulent. Popeyes buffet. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second topic was Popeyes founder Al Copeland's feud with interview with a vampire novelist Anne Rice. 
Oh, yeah, I read about this a little bit. That was a barn burn. Yeah, I was there when that was going on, so I know all the details. Uh, two, two very rich New Orleans that's residents. That's very true. And then uh, Al Copeland's cigarette boat racing boats. Uh, I was going to go into that. And then also the famous Fuck. Popeye's, the cartoon intellectual property lawsuit with Popeye's chicken. And that came down to the, there was, it had something to do with the absence of the apostrophe was the argument, right? Yeah, that it's was like, part of it. But uh, the most interesting part, which is just a little teaser for if you have me back, uh, <laughs> <laughs> During the lawsuit, Al Copeland, who uh, he's since passed away, but was a sort of a notoriously uh, loud-mouthed, uh, kind of a Trump-esque figure even. An eccentric. An eccentric businessman. Um, mm. During the lawsuit, he started putting Popeye the cartoon on the bags. The thinking being, they're already suing me. Right. I'm going to just use Popeye <laughs> recklessly with just a band. I kind of like that. Um but anyway, you guys were going to hear all about that, uh, but instead this we're going to talk this about is, Yogurtland. This, this, is, this is annoying to me because I, you've never been interesting in your life, and now <laughs> you start listing off all these things that are very interesting to me. Well, I'm sorry, Mitch. This is just what you're going to miss out on. Van, I'm being hard on you. You know, Van... Uh, invited me to the first crawfish boil I've ever been to. I was at he's that crawfish boil. He's a real great Louisiana time. guy. That's right. Weiger was there. Um, I took a picture of Handman, Hand, Mike Hanford, wearing a bib. It was a great time. Put it on Instagram. Lots of likes. Oh, sure. That sounds like a grand old time. <laughs> uh, Van, so uh, growing up, you, you experienced that real New Orleans life, huh? I did, yeah. Down in the lazy south, as we call it. Mm -hmm. and, and so what, 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 are, what are some of your favorite New Orleans treats, would you say? Do you like gator? Do you like uh, hush puppies? Do you like... Uh, you know, maybe hush puppies are more of a Florida thing, or what? Well, gator, for example, is sort of like an exotic tourist meat. Like, you're sure. going to see gator on a menu at a lot of restaurants, but for the most part, that's going to be uh, just sort of a tourist trap uh, yes. item. Now, there are some places that'll have a delicious gator dish, and you'll you know you'll know about those certain places. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you steered us towards a place that uh, Mitch and I went with my lovely wife Natalie uh, on your recommendation, it, and they had an alligator cheesecake mm -hmm. that was just yeah, that a delight. Is, that is a delicious item there, Giacomo's. Giacomo's, that was a fantastic restaurant. That was one of the best meals I had in New Orleans. I'd say that Giacomo's and then Mandina's was another place I just had a fantastic meal in that. And yeah, I, I'm surprised that down you, in the bayou. you went up to school in, in uh, the in, in the Baltimore or Washington, the Washington, D.C. area, was it? No, it was uh, St. No, Louis, that, right? I went to school in the St. Louis area. Oh, um, Evan Susser is from the Washington, D.C. <laughs> yes, area, what it is. and I did meet Evan Susser in uh, in college, and I think you sort of put those facts together I, I, I 100%. In, guys, in that lump inside your head. Did and, you go to Washington <laughs> University? We went to Washington University okay. so that's the in St. Louis. That's the confusion. So it is confusing. Yeah. It is confusing, but also... Why you you had such a great place to go to school down there? You went up, you had to fucking go to school with Susser. Uh, you know, if I had uh, <laughs> if I had never gone there, I would have never met Evan. We'd have never started working together out here. Interesting. Uh, we may not so know I, you. Yeah, I I would have a much more relaxing life. I think. But you guys have uh, your your big successes now. You're taking uh, big meetings with Hollywood insiders all the time. You're pitching all over town. You're Van, selling scripts. Van is one of the creators of. The What's Going On talk show, What's Going On with Mike Mitchell. I was a creator of What's Going On with Mike Mitchell. So uh, you, you've uh, you've you've caused a lot of uh, anxiety for me in my life. I was uh, I was back at FX today, and FX is the network who produced this uh, talk show featuring Mitch. Uh -huh. um, and uh, as we were leaving, the executive we were meeting with said, uh, "Do I know you guys? Have I met you before?" He said, "Oh well, we worked with FX before. Uh, we did a pilot, a talk show pilot called What's Going On." And then just a complete blank expression on her face, <laughs> followed by, oh, that was before my time. Right. Was she lying? Uh, I, I'm not entirely sure, but it certainly uh, did not ring a bell to her. But uh, I'm very proud of it. What's uh, going on with Blake Griffin? Uh, yes, that is, uh, <laughs> the, that's the new rumor. Um, <laughs> uh, I went to Neptune Oyster Bar. I want to I uh, talk about this before we... Uh, sure. Right, Neptune, right? Uh, is that the one that's right near... Uh, Oh, wait, I think I'm thinking of the one in San Francisco. Yeah, Neptune I don't know a Neptune. Bar. What's the one right by the crazy party street there? there there's that's uh, there's that's that you described about 30 oyster places in, uh, <laughs> no, on 40 but different the good, streets. Uh, 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 Acme Oyster House is right by no, Bourbon Street. Acme, that could be what you're thinking right of, but that's that. not a, I, that's a, I would say a, Maybe an overrated place, it, uh, it was or not, a place you'd read about in a Zagat guide. Maybe it was. It was not. It was not Acme, but it was. It was. It was right around there. You're not gonna. You're not gonna know it, are you? We All were. Right. Uh, we went. We spent like when we were in New Orleans. Had a lovely time. Um, 
and we, we were there. We, Mitch, you and I were there for the same wedding, so there, there were a bunch of mutual friends down there. But we walked over to Bur- me and Natalie walked over to Bourbon Street for one point, and I've told the story in the podcast before, but the drunkest man I've ever seen in person, just a staggeringly oh, yeah. drunk man yes. walking. Yeah, there's a lot of that. And then fell into a plate glass window yeah, with really... the force of a wrecking ball hitting the side of a building, but somehow didn't shatter it. Just like, just hit it so fucking hard. It was and actually then, truly, truly funny. It was really, it was, <laughs> it was insane. Something that happens with a decent amount of regularity in New Orleans, uh, you know, at least once a year, I would say, is uh, someone falling down drunk and hitting their head and just dying. Right. Oh, they just well, fall down and fun. hit their head and that's it for them. Um, about our, at our I've old apartment, uh, me and Ellie, our old apartment, we were right behind a blockbuster video that it has been, it got closed and turned into a pet co. We lived there long enough to watch this transition happen. Um, but we were, we were walking out of our apartment once, so we're walking next to this blockbuster and like these, uh, these four, uh, these two couples were walking together. There's two young couples, people in their 20 somethings. They're all just sort of like walking like, like mid story, like what, like everyone just sort of laughing, like ha 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 ha. Sounds like the friends crew. Yeah, it was. It was like the friends crew having a grand old time and then the this one guy, this this uh, bigger bald guy, just out of nowhere starts having a seizure on his feet and then falls and then hits his head into the side of the blockbuster video and collapses oh, to the God. ground. And everyone's like, oh, my God. It's like this huge medical emergency. We're, like, rushing over. Like, what the fuck is going on? Um, they're calling 911. Anyway, right next to the blockbuster is a hospital. So I sprinted over to the ER and I'm just like, like, you know, I like sprint across the parking lot and, and go into the ER and I'm like, like, like a guy just had a seizure, just hit his head over there. He's on the ground. And they just looked at me like, uh, call 911. Like, like there was no protocol for them to like, <laughs> wa- like, I was like, he's out, like you can see him from here. And there was like nothing they could do. By it the was way, very strange. This guy sounds like a real Chandler. <laughs> he was the Chandler of the group. It was he, a, he was, was he okay? It was. I, I honestly have no idea. We got oh, back Jesus there and the ambulance Christ. was arriving. I hope he was okay, but it was so bizarre how out of nowhere it was. I was like, that can happen with a seizure. It's just like you're like mid-stride and then all of a sudden you start convulsing and then your head is smashing into a cement wall. Oh, See, wow. this is part of the blockbuster experience that Netflix just can't replicate. That's true. <laughs> well, this is a depressing start to the podcast. Um <laughs> Van, yes. it was Felix's Oyster Bar. Felix's Oyster Bar. And, okay, Felix's, I know Felix's was Felix's. very good. Uh, Neptune is in in uh, in San Francisco. Yeah, it did not seem like the, the and I, one and, to me. And I and I think it actually is a little overrated. There's a really long line at, at, at Neptune, but there was there was a pretty long line at Felix's too. I liked Felix's a lot. Here's what I was gonna say. Okay. You guys got them grilled oysters down there, which yeah. are delicious. I love, I love, a, grilled, I love a grilled oyster. I, I, you know, I'm 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 a New England man, and we 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 kind of eat those things. Just you you, you shuck them and you sure, eat them. Sure, sure, and we do that too. But you we'll grill too. an oyster, we'll deep fry an oyster, or bread it. Hey, we'll deep fry them too. But the grilled oysters were really. It was something that I hadn't experienced that much of. Until I was down there, there's that buttery garlic sauce mm-hmm, on top of mm-hmm. them, and you get the bread. It's it's. It's my favorite version of oysters. I, I, I really liked it a lot. It was really, really good. So congrats. Good Thank j- you. Good job. I'll take all the credit for that. Yeah, Felix is, is Felix is a good spot. Uh, Felix is a good spot. I had alligator there too. It's it's good, but I guess you're right that it's it, that it, is a it's touristy a little bit thing. Of a gimmick. Also, uh, yeah. Popeyes, Felix, uh, Felix's uh, are all the New Orleans institutions <laughs> have their they have their roots in trademark infringement. From yes. cartoons from the twenties. <laughs> Felix is maybe like the wackest cat there is. Yeah, Felix sucks. Yeah, what does he do? He does. Is he like a magician? I don't know what he. I, he's just <clears> like a. He just. He's more known for the clock these days. I have no idea what his personality is. He's yeah. probably just generally mischievous. Van, I'm sure it's Van, like it has some sort of like racial connotations that are just like. Oh, Jesus. It's like based on some horrific racial stereotype was the origin of of, of Felix. You know who I hate is Heathcliff. Heathcliff really is bad. Like, ah, Heathcliff is he's he's fun. Heathcliff sucks. Like read an actual Heathcliff comic, it makes no sense. They're just utterly incoherent. I've like I've, I've, I've always preferred a bunch of them. Heathcliff just, to Heathcliff, Garfield. You prefer? I Heathcliff prefer Heathcliff. To, Garfield makes sense. Heathcliff is just nothing. I think but, that's what I prefer about it. By by the way, Van and Evan are probably writing all these movies. <laughs> are, you, are you writing the no. uh, the Heathcliff and the Felix the Cat movie? Uh, no, I'm not. But you know, uh, I I have been working on the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, and uh, I have something here. It's uh, it's got three holes in it. Uh, it's got uh, little wow. uh, little three ring binder clips in it. 
Um, and they're called the uh, Brads. Brads, yeah. Um, and I know that Evan Susser has been very uh, uh, not forthcoming about certain information. Wow. Uh, so I uh, I would like to read an excerpt from this. If please, I could. please do. Okay, cool. Wow, this is this is, this, a, this is a, a, an exclusive. This looks a little thin to be an actual draft. Or is is this a full draft or is this a treatment? What well, do you got? I, I you think got you're us? gonna. I think it's gonna become pretty obvious what I've got here okay. in a second. Okay. Um, hmm. <clears throat> Uh, this is, uh, let's see here, uh, artists shall not, without company's prior written consent, Ugh. engage in any publicity activities, including interviews with respect to the picture or artist services hereunder, provided, however, the artist need not obtain company's consent to engage in personal publicity activities, including interviews, which do not relate primarily to the picture and in connection therewith to make only incidental, non-derogatory mention of the company, the picture, artist services, or other person's rendering services in connection with the picture. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Evan Susser's signed contract for the Sonic the Hedgehog <laughs> movie containing the NDA that applies to him. Wow. Do you think he's in violation of his non-disclosure agreement by virtue of even appearing on this podcast? Uh, as long... I, I believe he is not, okay. judging by those terms. Right. Um, I think that disclosing the terms of the contract is actually a violation of the agreement on my behalf. <laughs> um, however, I don't think Evan has violated it. I, so I just want to say that uh, for those of you wondering, yes, there is a gravy stain on Evan's contract. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I think... Did he sign his name in gravy? <laughs> <laughs> That's just a spill, but it's very <laughs> close to a signature. The whole thing is printed on Papa John's napkins. Um, and then in case I needed it while I'm going through my paperwork, I brought these uh, demographics of Quincy, Massachusetts. Um, uh, this is just oh, a demographic what? breakdown. Um, what the fuck, man? <laughs> it's based on the, the 1990 and the 2010 census. Um, How are we shows doing? Well, actually, this is like a true fact. Uh, the uh, oh, God. the education level of Quincy did go up wow. when you left. Um, <laughs> it doesn't break down the cause of that. It could be a lot of factors, right. but you can make certain inferences from it if you want to. Mitch was just dragging the average down solo. Um, and also, oh, really? just the, those who are counting in 1990, which I would say were some of Mitch's prime Quincy years. Uh, for Quin sure, Quincy was 91 percent white. Quincy, mm. 91. It's, yeah, it's Boston area. What are you talking about? Uh, but also, now what is it? <clears throat> now what is it? It yeah. is uh, 67. Oh yeah. boy. Okay, some diversity coming in there. For sure. That's why you you bailed. <laughs> 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 what are the numbers? What's the population of Quincy? Population of this Quincy, turned into a Quincy pod. I like uh, it. Is uh, it's wow, how unusual! Just, o just over about a hundred thousand. Yep, hundred thousand. I missed that place. Anyway, uh, any anything interesting in the breakdown for Quincy Van? Uh, you know, uh, there the that one statistic about the education rate was the the best I could get to something interesting about it. Mm -hmm. Uh, I could tell you the uh, the maybe you could guess the, uh, what age bracket uh, in 2010 census uh, is the most uh, the largest of the brackets uh, in Quincy. These are in, in uh, four year increments. Is is in okay for in in right now you're saying? Yeah, right now. I'm gonna guess tw like twenties. Yeah, yeah. Oh, twenty five right. to twenty nine. Okay. Good work, Mitch. See, you know your hometown. I know my hometown because a lot of people are moving there. It's it, Quincy is getting a little bit not even because Quincy's not a terrible place, right? But it's getting a little bit of that oh gentrification, like moving, like oh it's a hip. There, like more young people are moving there because it's more it's affordable the spot. than Boston. Yeah, it's it's the spot. Just like South Boston and Dorchester, people kind of gentrified those places a little bit. They're moving to Quincy. I guess it's more expensive to live there now. I don't know. I don't fucking know what goes on there. But a lot of young, a lot of young uh, families are moving there. It's a great city, Van. And Weiger, I would love to take you guys there soon so you can get a little tour, just like I got a tour of New Orleans. Um, but anyway, speaking of New Orleans, or or you know what? Before we even get into New Orleans... I, I think we've gone through New Orleans and are done with it. Pretty oh, we were talking about you, you started with a bunch of New Orleans facts, and then... All right, then fuck New Orleans. <laughs> we talked through a few different <clears throat> restaurants there. I want to talk about, uh, this podcast just needs to be more fun, Okay. I think that we should have sound effects on the podcast, and I've said this a long time ago. I, you want this to turn into, like, morning zoo radio? When my dad used to drive me to school, he listened to Imus in the morning. Right? <laughs> I know that Imus... Notorious racist Don Imus. <laughs> Don, Imus has, Don Imus has turned into a right wing. My dad 
<laughs> is a dem baby. He's a he's he's a liberal man. He's right. dead. He's dead. He's passed away. But uh, he voted Green Party a long time ago. He's he, he he's he's a progressive guy. He did like Imus in the morning. Imus turned out to be a pretty awful guy. But here's the deal: is that he had fun sound effects. Right. I remember, <laughs> I remember they would have a they would they would uh, mention what time it was, and a duck would go wank wank, and I thought that was funny. Uh, and I think that. No one's even pay- Nick. You're on your fucking I look, phone. Wait, I, okay. I have a. I have one sound effect uh, on Dropbox on my phone. Hold on. Uh, I'm gonna announce the time first. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, what time is it, Van? Uh, it's 10:45 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> look, this is a mess. It's, this isn't playing. <laughs> you couldn't play it? No, it's not playing. Well, you know, it's an eight meg a file, so it's not downloading on the bad Wi-Fi in here. Well, was I've it, got something I can play for. Mitch was it Let's Go? What was it? Uh, I have a. I have Skeletor laughing. Jesus Christ! Uh, look, we're not going to add more sound effects. This we is should... already this is already like a chaotic waste of everyone's time. It should, I don't we think should, we wanna... it should be more fun. I think, I think it's be... plenty fun enough. I have something. It fun. should be fun for the listeners, and it isn't, and that's the problem. That's why the podcast is a, a mess. <laughs> I, I have something fun. It's fun for Mitch. It's fun for the listeners. Uh, a good friend of mine, a British actress, her name is Amber Hodgkiss. Uh, she was over at my house before I came to the podcast, and then before I waited two hours to go on. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> And uh, I, she has met Mitch on occasion at a few uh, a few oh, events. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. She's famous to me for saying, uh, who's Mitch when I bring him up? Right. Um, that's a running joke with us, though. So she doesn't know oh, who okay. Mitch is. She just says, who's Mitch? She's having a laugh. She's having a laugh. Um, but she has a little message uh, for Mitch um, and for the Doughboys. Um, I'm going to actually walk it over by Mitch's mic because there's a video element, and I want him to be able to watch it uh, and the audience to be able to hear what, it. What so. is, are you, what, what's going on here? I, look, he came in. He, this feels he came like a loaded going and ready to go. Oh god! He had a bunch of pre-planned bits. All right, here we are. Oh no! It's now silent, you fool! Silent. Ooh, my Mitch! It's, it's, oh god! There we go! No, no, no! no I what are you doing? <laughs> this is the most fucked up episode of this fucking. Show. We really we we joked on the previous episode that it was going to be the last, and then we just <laughs> failed by not doing that. Like we should have really just call like quit while we were way behind. Mitch. I've never seen a woman in my life more. She was. You can just tell in her eyes how forced she was <laughs> right, to do that. I feel so fucking bad for her, man. I am being too mean to you. I'm going to be nicer to you. Thank you. And I Mitch. want to start by saying, you and Evan, you're you're, you're uh, you guys do great jobs. You write a lot of funny things. A lot of great stuff. A lot of fun, funny stuff. Can you tell us the state of Sonic? What's going on? Uh, I cannot tell you guys the state of Sonic. Uh, I am not able to comment at this time. Wow. Uh, if you guys want more excerpts uh, from Evan's non-disclosure agreement, I am. Happy to discuss those, but I cannot go into any details. <laughs> Weiger is now just looking at his phone. Here's Thanks the thing: I got in my head because we we're talking. I was brought up Heathcliff earlier. There was some Heathcliff defense. You know, I was a big fan of the cartoon. The cartoon, for Heathcliff yeah, as well. the cartoon was funny. He ate fish. He, I, I and he liked the trash. He the loved strip the trash. Is, the strip is so fucking bad. I was looking up some old Heathcliffs because I I sent I shared a few of them on Twitter because they're just so incoherent. But here's like here's just a random one that I looked up. It's got hey, Heathcliff. When... It's got Heathcliff on a dirt bike. I like it already. And he's wearing an astronaut suit that covers his face. Uh huh. And he's or maybe a motorcycle safety outfit maybe like motorcy- Evil Knievel it, might wear. I'm saying it looks like an astronaut suit with mm-hmm. cat ears. Like mm-hmm. that's how poorly it's drawn. He's on a dirt bike. He's jumping over, I guess, a stra- a road bump uh-huh. in front of his house. And an old lady, I think the old lady who owns him, is leaning out the window, <laughs> and the caption is. He's late for church. Like what? <laughs> what is that trying to say? It's it doesn't that's, make any sense. I think that's actually funny. <laughs> that is actually funny. He's late for church. What? He's late for church, so he's riding a dirt bike. That's the that's the joke behind. That's it? That's a funny f- joke. Uh, does this does it have a year on it? When that's from? It's from like this is from like last year, 2015. <laughs> Here's another one. Here's one of 20, that's even funnier. <laughs> a 2015 Heathcliff. All right, three youths. I'll show this to you. Three youths are playing pickup basketball. By the on way, the comic doesn't call them youths. That's old man Weiger who's calling them <laughs> fucking youths. They are youths because one of them has like a fucking old timey cap with a, and one of them has a propeller beanie, and one of them has a newsboy cap. They're like they're like kids from the twenties, but they're in modern day. Um, they're playing pickup basketball beneath a cityscape. 
Heathcliff is in a blimp above their heads. A blimp, which is a recurring <clears throat> theme in the, the Heathcliff strips. Uh -huh. The caption is, too bad he had to cut out early. So the idea is Heathcliff was playing basketball with these kids and then left in a blimp? <laughs> That's the joke? Van, you should pitch the Heathcliff movie. I think he's funny. I think I, if you... I like Heathcliff, and I like his blimp. You I... know, uh, as a child, I actually rode on the Goodyear blimp. Did you really? What I really did, like? yeah. Uh, it was fun. It flew over my school. Uh, it was uh, There was a promotion going on where if you bought a full set of tires, you right. got to ride on the Goodyear blimp. Uh, and my dad, it had always been a dream of his to ride on the Goodyear blimp. This is a real dream. Uh, and so he bought new tires for himself. He bought new tires uh, for my mother. And then he gave away two sets of new tires to two friends of his so that he could take his family on the Goodyear blimp. Wow. Wait, so it was like, Jesus. this was not a contest. This no, was like, this was a, like, if you buy one set, you're guaranteed on. I, it's a, it was a crazy That's offer. That's an insane promotion. Uh, because a, a set of tires, while not the cheapest thing in the world, also is a pretty cheap ticket for a ride on the Goodyear blimp, something right. that has no value. It's a, a, almost an unlimited value to, to such an experience. Four sets of tires so he could take his immediate family on the blimp with him. That's quite something. Yeah. What's, a, what's a, the interior of the blimp like? What's that cabin? Uh, the interior of the blimp is, I would say it's actually about the size of this room. Okay. Um, uh, so there, and you can see the, the like, there's not a, a barrier between the blimp pilot and co-pilot and you. They're so just you, sitting They're there. just kind of sitting up there and there's sort of rows of, of seats behind the you sit in yeah and so it's for people who aren't in the studio which is basically everyone who's listening uh, this is kind of the interior is kind of like the the size of a small rv it's it's a very it's a pretty compact narrow space and w when was this what year uh this would have been um let's see i would have been seven years old i believe okay um so this is uh like uh, the early 90s uh 93 92 something like that too bad it wasn't 1937 <laughs> no i'm sorry to report. <laughs> all right um, one, one more heathcliff i looked up Okay. We've got a genie coming out of a lamp in an alley in front of a dumpster. Heathcliff mm -hmm. is wearing a pair of pants. The caption is, the genie is speaking, and attributed to him is this sentence. There you go, a new pair of jeans. So that was his wish. His wish was to get a pair of jeans. That's yeah, funny. Heathcliff's you easy to please. It's not funny. I, like it makes sense, which is better than most Heathcliff. I'm smiling. <laughs> I, I, I think this has been a. I think this has been a real disaster for you, Liger. Look, I think I, these have all been terrific. I'm taking my case to the Burger Brigade. I think the people out there will be on the side of Team Fuck Heathcliff. But here's what I would say: If you're talking about the Heathcliff movie, here's my pitch for you. You take all the great cats. You take Heathcliff, Garfield, Felix. Who else? <laughs> the 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 cat the cat from uh the cat from Sabrina the Teenage Witch itchy oh wait, itch, yeah you take Scratchy, Scratchy from the Simpsons you do Cat Avengers all the great cats cram them into oh, one God. movie you're such a fucking idiot justify all why the like justify why all these different cats are going to team up to fight one bad dog. And that, like that seems like that's like in the age of all these mashup movies, in the age of all these expanded universes. I think that, that we should do the same thing with kids' properties. Come up with a family franchise that's based mm -hmm. on taking a bunch of different iconic characters and I putting got, them into one I got, film. I got another pitch for you. Yeah, you call it Pussy Posse, <laughs> <laughs> and you have all the all the characters are voiced by Leonardo DiCaprio, right? <laughs> Ethan Suppley. <laughs> You get the real pussy posse to voice the cats. The guy from they played the manager in Entourage. That's right. All the all those lovable guys. Who else was it? Toby McGuire. Toby McGuire. Yeah. Toby McGuire. But I think he had a falling out. Anyways, anyone who was a part of the pussy posse is a huge <laughs> piece of shit. Uh, except I do like Leo. He's a good actor. Uh, Man, so I do want to get to Yogurt Land and talk about it with you oh, guys. Oh yeah, sure. Right. But do we before have I to? do, well, before I do, I have one more thing I want to talk about. Um, yeah. You know, you guys introduced me as a screenwriter, and it is true that I do write with Evan. Right. Um, but I do a lot of other things. Um, I produce, I direct, uh, I design and develop apps. You wear a lot of hats. I wear a lot of hats. And Literally. something I'm working on, which is, uh, it's sort of a startup, um, and I want to just talk about it for a minute. It does relate uh, to you guys. Uh, and oh, it's called Mitch.Pizza. Oh, God. Uh, and Fuck this shit. What <laughs> Mitch.Pizza is, is this it's is a way- This is why you weren't asked on for so fucking long. <laughs> It's a way to communicate with Mitch. You know, right. Mitch is notoriously hard to get in touch with. Uh, he if doesn't you... answer emails. No. Um, and I don't do it. Not I'm only unplugged. does he not answer them, you know, <laughs> it can be hard to even figure out Mitch's email. Uh, his, right. He has an AOL email address that is almost indecipherable. Um, so if you email 
uh, and this will be live when the when the podcast airs. If you email Mike at Mitch Pizza, that email is going to go directly to Mike Mitchell. Um, and we've got a lot of features planned in the future. If he doesn't respond to an email in a certain amount of time, it'll send a notice to his phone and things like that. Um, but if you guys want to just please start emailing anything you want to email to Mitch, you can send it to Mike at Mitch Pizza, and it's going to go right to him. Okay, there'll be a lawsuit shortly. <laughs> if you fucked with my phone or anyway, these get forwarded to me. I'm blocking all of them just so people know. <laughs> Mitch dot because I like pizza. Is that what it is? Well, I wanted it to be easy to remember, uh, right. easy to remember, because mm-hmm. the biggest problem with emailing Mitch is it's very difficult to remember his email address, which For is sure. I believe M M I C then a four instead of and an H. Shut up! Don't say my <laughs> email. And then a series of numbers yes, that okay. I couldn't say if I wanted to because they aren't his birth date. Uh, his favorite uh, football player. They're they're no discernible numbers at all. They're just right. random. That's the way I like it. Digits. Don't fucking, it's like the Powerball numbers. Don't yeah. email me. Is my the real answer. <laughs> also, Van, if I was if I didn't have these headphones on, I'd stun you. Stone Cold Steve Austin stun you. And I just want to say, you're working with the man himself right now. I am. That is true. I'm working with uh, Steve Austin, a uh, former professional wrestler, uh, current good friend of Van's. Uh, he, he now, uh, he... You think that's how he self-identifies? <laughs> I think so, yeah. He's, uh, is any, any good anecdotes you can tell us about Stone Cold? Because I gotta say, I think that Stone Cold is one of the top 20 fictional characters of all time. You made I... this case to me in a text message once, like, the, like just out of nowhere, you just texted a, a group text, like, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin is one of the best fictional characters ever. He, he truly is. I, and in college, I used to like to stun people, it was fun. Uh, Wu Tang stuns people every so often. It's the stunner is one of the best wrestling moves that a, a any great, yokel can do. Great wrestling move. Uh, you know, uh, Steve has told me lots of great stories. He told me the story about the time he did the stunner on Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. Um, he told oh, me, really? uh, yeah, he told me uh, 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 so just plenty of great stories. But what I'm going to give you is a story of something that happened today with Steve Austin oh, uh, and Evan Susser. Um, oh, we I hope were that ends up with Susser getting stunned. For the, <laughs> we for were the Olympics. We were uh, Susser did not get stunned, but he he came very close. Uh, oh, man. We were in a meeting with Steve, and uh, it came up that uh, that Steve has a ranch that he goes to in uh, San Antonio, I believe, Texas. Right. Um, and Evan mentions this, and he referred to it as Steve's farm. Um, <laughs> to which Steve responded. I ain't got a farm. I've got a ranch. I don't have chickens and shit. I've got cool stuff like <laughs> horses and tractors. <laughs> you dumbass, Susser. Did uh, did Evan, in response, drop his sandwich? <clears throat> yeah, he dropped his jaw and the sandwich fell out. He was eating at the time. Did uh, did Evan then set up uh, a match between Stone Cold and, and his uh, his client, The Undertaker? I'm trying to say that. <laughs> Susser is the modern day uh, Paul Bearer. <laughs> right. Anyways, uh, Van, we should talk about Yogurt Land. Okay, yeah, let's do what it. What the hell does this place mean to you? Because we got to say this much. I don't even know if it means anything to you, but there was a, a, a special promotion going on. It, there are all the Nintendo characters here. You got three Mario nut, fin, three Mario fanatics in the room right yes. now. Yes. All, all three of us were raised on Super Mario. I think it bonds us in, in a lot of ways. So yeah, I think that's true. I, I and so Yogurt Land right now, as Mitch was alluding to, they've got each week through August and September, they've got a different Mario characters flavor that they're featuring. Some of them seem a little bit more connected to. Uh, what the character I had some is known issues for. with that, yeah. Others of them seem a little bit more arbitrary. Um, and the flavor that I had in this particular week was the yeah, there was the uh, bitch was asking if you could take a water. Yes, you could take a water. Thank you. Uh, the uh, I had the Koopa Troopas lemon cupcake. Did you guys uh, did you guys sample the Koopa Trooper flavor? Is that what was available? Uh, at your I did. Locations? That was what was available. Uh, That's and- I sampled it. I did not get it. But before we get into that, yes, can I just ask Van a quick question? Of course. Van, yes. what does yogurt land mean to you? What do desserts mean to you in general? What are your favorite type of desserts? Well, uh, I like a lot of desserts, but I think actually if you're asking what yogurt land means to me, I can tell you a little bit about uh, a personal experience I have with yogurt land. Uh, yeah, and it involves sure. my wife. I'm a married man. Yeah. Uh, and something, uh, there's a yogurt land uh, just up the street from me. I live in Laurel Canyon, and if you go just up the street, you hit a, an area of Los Angeles called the Valley. And right there, when you right get to the Valley, there's a there's a yogurt land. And sometimes, uh, uh, you know, uh, if my wife's at home and I'm in the area, what I'll do is I'll go to that yogurt land 
and I will uh, video call her on my cell phone. Mm -hmm. And I'll take the camera and I'll show all the flavors <laughs> right. of the yogurt land one by one. And, uh, and then she'll get to pick which flavor she would like me to bring home to her. Uh, and it's just a nice it's very thoughtful couple you. moment uh, yeah. for the two of us, and it involves that yogurt land. That, and that, that frozen treat, sweet. that frozen treat uh, survives that what ten minute drive? How far are you going? You know, if it's a nighttime drive and it's after the traffic has died down, I can get back from yogurt land in seven eight minutes. Oh boy, okay. Wow, okay. So, uh, like, what is so? If you're doing that, that's usually something for her, or are you getting a little sweet treat for yourself as well? Uh, I'll pick up something for myself too, but uh, you know it's uh, it's it's about the entire experience, right? Would you say you have a sweet tooth? Are you like a dessert fan? Uh, you know, I'm I'm more of a savory guy. Like gotcha. if I had a choice between uh, you know just a terrific, delicious dessert, but also maybe a, a tasty, uh, juicy hamburger, I think I'd go with that tasty, juicy hamburger. Vin, you know what? we're bonding a little bit here because I feel the same way. I, there I, you go. Uh, <clears throat> I I don't. I, I, I like dessert, obviously. I, I, who doesn't like dessert? Uh, dessert is just weird for me because it's a thing that I feel like I shouldn't be eating almost right. always. So I don't usually eat dessert. I know that some people, like, when people eat dessert every, like, like a couple times a week even, which, like, that to me seems excessive. I mentioned before, growing up, I, I, we had dessert every night. That was just like yeah, a family that's, ritual. That's 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 surprising to me. It was we, insane in hindsight that we were doing that. Yeah, I, we, did, we didn't, we I definitely did not do that in my family. I like dessert, but I am kind of more of a, a savory guy. And does that translate over into my even my desserts? I mean, I mean I, there's not a ton of savory desserts, but what, what I'm saying is like, what, what what am I kind of craving in a dessert? And it would usually be like, like uh, something chocolatey or or, or or some sort of right, or some sort of maybe cake. Uh, you know, out there, let us know if you prefer sweet or savory. Uh, if you uh, if you're a sweet guy, hashtag sweetheart. And if uh, you like it savory, hashtag savory flavory. <laughs> Holy Jesus Some solid Christ. hashtags. Now, I, I'm not sure if you guys have this information because I've seen the sort of preparation that can go into a Doughboys. Right. Um, I have savory list, flavor. I have the list of flavors sure thing, of Super Mario Flanders. <laughs> Um, I have the flavors, the list of Mario-themed flavors, all of the flavors that were offered during this promotion. That's right. Uh, and I think we can maybe go through them real quickly. Uh, yeah, I think talk we should about break which this down. ones. That